Welcome to basic setup of the Vista 20P Home Alarm System Part 13. This video will discuss the commands that control your entry and exit interface with your alarm. Specifically, these are the commands that will be covered. You will see excerpts out of two different documents. And the first caveat we have to deal with is the programming guide tells you what buttons to push but does a terrible job of telling you what the command is used for. To find that information you have to look it up in the installation and setup guide. So during this video we'll work out of both these documents. I explained the layout and the format of each command in part 4 so we'll be skipping that and moving on. For all the commands we're going to discuss you must be in program mode. If you're lucky enough to own key fobs you can arm and disarm your rear alarm from outside of the house and don't need to worry about any of this programming. For the rest of us, we have to use the keypad. We will either arm it as stay or as away. Without some background knowledge, the first command, field 84 auto stay, can seem somewhat confusing. Factory default for this command, both partitions are set to on. This is how it works. If you arm your panel as away, and the panel sees that you have not opened either entry exit number one or entry exit number two, it assumes you're staying in the house. It will then automatically switch over to arming stay instead of away. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. If you're anything like me, you're asking what could be the purpose for that? Here's why. When the alarm is armed in stay mode, some interior sensors like your motion sensors are disabled. The reason? Unless you're a small cat or dog, you're going to set off your alarm simply walking around in your house. So let's assume you are a small pet and you want to turn off this function. How do you do it? You'll want to program field 84 to 0. Let's take a look. Auto stay arm is now off. Your other options are partition 1 on, partition 2 on, or both partitions on. Moving on, let's look at field 34, exit delay. This field will determine the length of time that will elapse between when you press the arm button and when the alarm will actually be active. Pay particular attention to this sentence. The system waits the time entered before arming the entry exit zones. What this means is, the delay is for only two zone types, entry exit 1 or entry exit 2. All other zone types will arm immediately. The factory default setting for this command is 60 seconds for both partitions. Please take notice that each time entry must be two digits. If you wish to disable the exit delay, set a value of 00, zero into each partition. Entering 0, 01 through 96 will give you that number in seconds for the delay. Finally, entering 97 will give you 120 seconds of delay. If you have trouble getting the kids out the door to get to the school bus, maybe this is your setting. Let's go ahead and set an exit delay for 15 seconds. The control panel will now respond in the following manner when you arm it. You will hear one second beeping that will start beeping faster at 10 seconds. This delay is very useful if not necessary when you arm in the away mode. There is a problem though. The command doesn't distinguish between away and stay. When you arm stay mode, you still get the countdown. I don't know about you, but listening to up to two minutes of incessant irritating beeping is real low on my list of fun projects. So, to turn off the beeping, let me introduce you to my friend, Field 37 Audible Exit Warning. Audible Exit Warning is field number 37. By default, exit beeping is set to on. To turn it off, the correct entry will be 0 on partition 1 and 2. Let's take a look. I'll now rearm the panel. 
You can see you still have your delay, but the audible warning is gone. Turning off the beep did cause one problem. Since, by default, there is no display on the keypad for countdown, you don't know how long it's going to be before the alarm is actually active. We can fix this with field 197, Exit Time Display Interval. As I mentioned earlier, default is zero, no display. Your other options are one to five, which indicate how many seconds in between display updates. Entering a one will display every number. For example, 10, 9, 8, 7. Enter a five, the update will be every five seconds. 20, 15, 10, five, etc. Let's go ahead and set it to one. This is what your new countdown would look like. The next command requires a little explaining. Field 38, confirmation of arming ding. The name, arming ding, makes it sound like a nice gentle command. But in reality, when you read the fine print, the whole world's going to know you armed your alarm. At the end of the countdown, your external siren's going to blast away for half a second. This command is only active during the away mode. It's like the chirper on your car. Lock the car from the outside, it chirps to let you know it's armed. Lock the doors from the inside, you don't hear any chirp. By default, this command is off. Select 1 to enable the command for both keypads and wireless key fobs. And select 2 for wireless only. Let's program our panel to 1. At this point of the video, I ran into a problem. My alarm training center doesn't have an outdoor siren. To show you how this command has affected your alarm, I filmed the next part of this video on an active system that has a 6272 CV keypad installed. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is you'll hear an electronic voice in the background. That is not part of this function. It's coming from that extra keypad. Alarm away. Exit now. Alarm away. At the end of the exit countdown, you can hear both the internal and external speakers sound off for half a second. Let's take a look at how a key fob would work. Armed away. Exit now. Armed away. The last two commands we'll look at today is 35 and 36. 35 is entry delay 1, 36 entry delay 2. Essentially, how long do you have to disarm the alarm once you've entered? Back when you programmed the zones for your alarm, you had two possible entry-exit zones available to you. Zone Type 1 and Zone Type 2. Here's the reason why they gave this to you. You can enter your house from many different locations. You may want a delay of 45 seconds for the main house, while a delay of 4 minutes is desirable for the garage. This way you can drive in, park, get out, go over and disarm the alarm. Field 35, Entry Delay 1, sets the time for Entry Exit number 1. What you'll find is you program this command exactly the same way you programmed your exit delay. You just have a wider range of entry delays available to you. By default, this command is set to 30 seconds. Enter the value 00 through 96. We'll give you the corresponding delay in seconds equivalent to what you just typed in. 97 will give a 120 second delay. 98, 180 seconds and 99, 240 seconds. Don't forget, use two-digit numbers and you have two partitions. Let's turn off the entry delay for field 35. To do this, we'll enter a value of 00. zero. You program field 36 exactly the same way as you did 35. Okay. At this point, I'd like to take the opportunity to tell you about a potential problem you may run into. We spent a lot of time talking about setting up sounds on the keypads. Everything I've told you is guaranteed to work on the keypad that's at address 16. You cannot change that keypad's attributes. However, back in part 11, I talked about how to install a second 6160 Alpha keypad. During installation, you can turn off the entry exit sounds. That will override the programming that you've done today. Time for my disclaimer. I am not a professional alarm installer. 
I'm just some guy that likes to learn new stuff and pass it on to others. Thanks for watching.